<laughs> You're live. That's good. Hello. So time for self-censoring. What's that? <laughs> um, without the ring light, I can wear my glasses. Well, all right. And I don't look like I have lasers coming out of my eyes. <laughs> Well, we can't even see your eyes with the shadow from your hat. So. It's it's I'm hiding the uh, under eye bags that come from eating an entire case of blue raspberry sour patch kids. It sounds didn't like, get much sleep. Sounds like you should be watching some Nickelodeon programs. Maybe apparently not. not. Maybe not a documentary about it. It might be depressing. So. My era of Nickelodeon was before all that, the mm. Dan Stevens stuff. Sure, it was. It was. I was figure it out. Uh, salute your shorts. Yeah. Legends of the Hidden Temple. I'm guessing that it didn't start with it did. that stuff. I didn't watch any of those shows that were they were talking about. Keenan and Kel. That's the next documentary that all that generation of stuff gets tainted and corrupted. All that. Yeah. All that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anywho, how are you? And none of those people ended up messed up at all. Amanda Bynes or any of those people. I feel quite so. bad for Amanda Bynes. Anyway. It's you know, it's funny because because she was very talented. You know, everybody talks about the Disney Channel kids mm -hmm. that grow up and get all weirded out and stuff. And and, and usually we've generally said, well, not the Nickelodeon kids, because they were already messed up, apparently. Right, right. So, and, oh. the, and the standards were different. You know, the, well. like Nickelodeon always would have more edgy stuff than what Disney Channel had. Disney Channel was the clean type right. stuff. And now maybe the agenda's not quite the same. You know who seemed to turn out? Okay, Hillary Duff. By by standards of child stars, for sure. She seems to be doing okay. Well, and, and good for you, Lizzie McGuire. Like Shia LaBeouf came came around. Yeah, you know, to took him a while. Still weird, I think. Mm -hmm. Just a weird dude. But how do you how, okay. do you how do you live and and uh, work and relate in Hollywood and not be weird? Right? Truth. Like like you know all these. There's a reason. I don't know how to I don't know how to live and not be weird. You know, <laughs> our, our friend Ryan, uh, who spent many years in Hollywood, uh, could not wait to get out. Right. It's like smart gotta, guy. Got to get out. So smart guy. Another Disney Channel show. Was it smart guy? Uh, Little Mallory boy. Yeah. What was his that name? That was Disney. I think. Tia and Tamara Mallory's Taj. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. That was actually a pretty decent little show. I really didn't watch many it's Disney shows. Funny how I was many, into the decoms. I watched all of these uh, I shows. I, I was think, a Disney Channel. Watching all. Of them. I was a Disney Channel original movie girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Johnny Tsunami. That's just thinking that was the first one that came to mind. Smart House. <laughs> that was. They my made dream. a lot of pretty good movies though, during that. Without course. those movies, there would be no High School Musical. Those mm, movies walked, or, so High School Musical could run. Or dance. Or dance. And go, they go, made, go they wild made a cats. lot of good ones after that uh, era too, and then some of them maybe not so great. Well, but. anyway, I'm going to start recording. See, we didn't waste time at all. <laughs> Hello. I think YouTube and Facebook might beg to differ. They're used to it. <laughs> they might say, and we haven't been here for a couple weeks. So I was listening to a, a long form podcast yesterday. I've mentioned it before. The Just Thinking podcast, highly recommended, uh, and they're actually. The, the theme yesterday was black conservatism and a very interesting take. And it, especially two black men who said, there's no such thing. This is silly. There's, you know, your melanin is not the point. Your, right. your mind is the difference, not your melanin. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> but uh, pastor Daryl used to be Deacon Daryl, but uh, Daryl B. Harrison as the, as he's uh, the host said, <laughs> went on a whole kind of not a tirades too strong a statement, but he was talking about some folks dropping um, not so subtle hints via X or whatever mm. about, you know, drop all the extra banter and so on and, and, and so forth. And it's like, listen, <laughs> we go weeks between doing this as we're preparing to it because it's like a three hour podcast oh. where they're doing, you know, they, they take their topic, they do their homework separately. One's in Atlanta, one's in California, and then they connect. Mm -hmm. um, and so as they're, you know, doing this, it's like, this is just the exuberant joy of, you know, two brothers who love each other getting together. And so okay. listen, there's, there's, there's that little button down on the bottom <laughs> that, that fast forwards. <laughs> and then there's the stop and you can, you just not listen if you it's want. True. It doesn't bother me at all. Would you call? Would you call our our banter 
a result of exuberant joy. Exuberant joy <laughs> of a brother and sister who love each other. I'll take and, it. And, uh, I'll take know, it. It, it. It's funny because it is, you know, just about the only time we see each other outside the church mm. most of the time, you know, and sometimes, you know, other, there are different seasons. Getting your stuff, eyes so. fixed. and Well, yeah, I can actually see you. Hey. That's, a, <laughs> that's a thing. I'm making bread and you're getting your eyes fixed and we yeah. just got, you know, so, life. But, uh, so I'm very glad to do this. Yeah, it's uh, what we don't want to do with our banter is waste our time, but we do hey. we do enjoy the conversation. And and in all seriousness, you can feel free to skip ahead with for the first five or ten minutes if you don't. And, and or sometimes or 15. 20, Twenty-five minutes out of a thirty-minute <laughs> podcast, uh, and <clears throat> you're not hurting anybody's feelings or insulting anybody. And, and I say this specifically for my mom, who would feel like if I fast forward, I'm I'm being insulting. I'm you know I should. I need to respect Now, if we were monetizing these videos, then that'd be a different story. But, <laughs> but hey, to the extent that it's helpful to you and enjoyable to you, then go for it. And if you don't, this is this is not a monetized podcast at all. This is, this is not it's something, something real. That's right. real. We're not, uh, you know, we're not trying to drive up followers other than if the content is helpful, we want people to be able to, to access it. So that said, the French think it's helpful. If you, whatever your platform is, Facebook, YouTube, uh, if it's an audio format that, that you're listening to, the more you like it, uh, subscribe to the channel, share it, share it comment, it. <laughs> <laughs> twist it. <laughs> I'll jump back another <laughs> decade or so and you can whip it and whip it good. Uh, skip it. No, as, skip it. <laughs> as you go, uh, you know, as you go along, all of those things, every, every interaction helps the algorithm, which means it gets boosted a little bit more uh, so more people can see it. So if you think it's helpful uh, or worth putting out there, then, then by all means, please interact. It. Just, you know, say hi in the comments, you know, any of those types of things. Word of mouth, just tell people, hey, check this out. Uh, share with your friends. Listen to these two weirdos. All that kind of stuff. And some people uh, listen to it at one and a half speed. I, like I'm, your sister. On the audio, I'll listen to I'll listen to us at a much higher speed. Uh, oh, gosh, one, one and a half or two. Because I already know what it was. It gives me anxiety. Um, I listen to most of my podcasts at one and a quarter speed because you really don't tell the difference right. all that much. How much, until time, the, how much is, time does that shave off? About 15 minutes mm -hmm. off of an hour podcast. But, you know, I, somebody can correct my math if that's wrong. But if I'm increasing oh. by 25%, I assume I'm getting to, I'm getting to hear 25% more. <clears throat> but um, as we're, you know, as we're looking at uh, how, you know, how we get through stuff, I, I want us to be able to just be us, right? Because mm -hmm. I can't be somebody else. I tried that with middle school and that wasn't, wasn't fun. Um, so it's, it's not going to be for everybody. And we're not going to have hurt feelings if you don't think that the podcast is for you. If you do, then, you know, you can still pick and choose the parts that you like. You know, like uh, my wife might fast forward through some of the, the stuff at the beginning. And that's cool. There's <laughs> Why? No, 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 nothing wrong with that. It's just like, oh, he's talking again. But, you know. She, that, she hears you talk a lot, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, probably, Anywho. Probably more than anybody needs to. It's not a waste of time. No, and that and that's kind of the, the goal here is to be able to interact with the Word of God and with each other in a way that is, I don't know, in, informal, I guess, but uh, yet still meaningful. We, we want cool. to be real. So. We are real. Real right. weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we missed a couple weeks. Hi, Sue. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sue's interacting and bumping that algorithm. Thank uh, you. We missed a couple weeks, but we're back. We did. Feels like forever. It does. So not, the exuberant joy is even even greater. Yes. Yes, indeed. In this uh, on this rainy day, this rainy oh, Thursday I love morning, it. I love it. It, there is something cool about it, and it's not a windy rainy day, so right? And it's not that. like freezing cold. So I, you know, I go outside. It's not a November rain. Yeah. So when you said originally, like a couple minutes ago, said November rain, my mind, this is our different eras. My mind went to No Rain by Blind Melon. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. Yeah. That's. And this is why people stop listening. <laughs> uh <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of those people stopped a long time well, ago. So anyway. 
Uh, so yeah, it's been a while, um, but we're back. And our, our standard '90s musical <laughs> reference, that's because the, it seems it's like it's always been a while. It seems like our weekly podcast Stained gets is, paid every time. Uh, we don't. <laughs> much more. Aaron <laughs> Lewis is just waiting. They don't get paid. Uh, they probably want. If he's to. waiting, he's wasting his time. Ah. So this weird this I wouldn't say this isn't a new series, but uh No, this is kind of a bridge, a one off bridge between uh our second Thessalonians hold fast series and going into this uh three part series that we'll be starting uh in uh um, believing, belonging and becoming. And so uh as we're making this bridge, we wanna establish the foundation that um the the truth of the gospel, and this was this is kind of where we were standing on Easter. It, it, it's either real or it's not, mm -hmm. right? So, either the resurrection is one hundred percent true, or it is an absolute waste of time. And that was Paul's point in First Corinthians fifteen, which was our our text on Sunday. Um, he said, "Look, if if there's no resurrection, then Jesus isn't raised. If Jesus isn't raised, what are you doing?" Right. What, what, what are we even doing here? Right. So this is uh, this is your Ben Affleck moment. You know, what are we even doing here? And uh, and and that's kind of what holds that text together. And he goes from all of the things that he's saying to the Corinthian church to this very doctrinal chapter where he says, look, I, I passed on to you what I received. The 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 and Paul has elsewhere made um he's made a strong point of the fact that he didn't receive this from somebody else. He received this from the Lord and it was affirmed by the other apostles, but he didn't go to them and, and receive it from them. So it's not like uh, <clears throat> Paul has himself refuted the idea that, uh, well, these, uh, you know, first century men got together and, and developed and created this religion of all of them. Paul's probably the only one who could have been qualified for such a level of thought and, and so on. But there's no part of the message that they are preaching that is conducive to that. Mm -hmm. There's no part of the life that they chose. We were just talking about this last night in the Desiring God study. Um, the last chapter of the book, um, Piper added later on in later editions on suffering uh, as as the sacrifice to the Christian hedonist. And and so as as he's looking at Paul in particular, it's like why would you willingly, and that's what Paul said, he actually was talking about the same text uh, as a correlative to, to what Paul was saying about the life that he'd lived and being beaten and so on. <clears throat> and it's like, why, why would you, why would you just voluntarily put yourself in harm's way for something you don't actually believe? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and, and that's kind of Paul's right. case in, in first Corinthians 15. Listen, if this is not true, if Jesus isn't raised, <clears throat> excuse me, our, our gospel doesn't exist. Our preaching is useless. Your faith is useless. You're still in your sin. You're not saved. There is no hope of this, this eternal life after death. And so we are of all people most to be pitied. We are the most pitiful people on earth. And it's not merely... Uh, this was our, our discussion last night. It's not merely that, oh, well, I, I chose not to do all these wicked things that the rest of the world is doing and, and benefiting from that. He's not suggesting that we should be wicked. He's suggesting that we should live like the Epicureans, you know, live for today, you know, la, 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 la. Um, th that we should live Shout. as, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, anyhow, we should live for just the moment right. because there's nothing beyond the moment. Right. But that's, even that's not really the point that we gave up so much, you know, good times or whatever we can all, I think, recognize, or most of us can recognize that life in Christ in this world, the, the moral straight life is ultimately and actually some research just was uh, uh, being talked about this week that affirms this, the straight life tends to produce a greater, longer lasting happiness mm. uh, than, than the self pursuit. Um, the, you know, we, we have all this and, and we're seeing this in our generation today where um, the, all of the numbers from marriage and, and childbearing lower 
later, all of these things. Happiness numbers, hugely down, Plummeting. which, you know, you could look at that and say, well, that's, you know, it's correlative, not, not causative. And, and so, you know, these things are, are happening, but, um, but the, the research that, the, and I don't remember who came up with it, what, what university did the study, but they're showing that people who are married and have children are uh, significantly happier on all happiness measures than people that don't. And so while we know that that's not true in every single case, that is a picture of a society. So when Paul says that, you know, if we only have hope in this life because of Christ, then we are to be pitied above all people. That doesn't seem to be what he's talking about because, you know, I'm pretty sure Caligula wasn't happier than right. the rabbis who were living, the, you know, this particular way. But in Paul's own life, he talks about his suffering and the things that he suffered for Christ, the, the beatings and the, the shipwrecks and some, some of those things were caused by those who opposed Christ. Others were general suffering that he endured because he was willing to put himself in harm's way. Now that, that that's a viral moment. I almost fell off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, but, you know, why was he shipwrecked? Because he was doing these things to spread the gospel, it sounds like Rome and so on and so forth. If he if he didn't believe that this was true, right. then he wouldn't live that life that put him in those situations. Well, and didn't like 99% of the disciples die like horrible martyrdom deaths? Uh, all, all but John died as right. martyrs, is yeah. my understanding. So, uh, and so why would they, you know, you think, why would they do that if they, yeah. if, you know. And, and John was in exile and, right. and, you know, they tried to kill him too. And uh, legend, I, I don't know what, how much is hagiography and how much is actual history, but uh, supposedly John was uh, supposed to be, he was, they attempted to boil him in oil and it didn't take, I guess. So, you know, like, okay, well, fried, that doesn't fried seem John. Um, but. Here's what grinds my gears all the time is that, most people manual transmissions i that would be a broken car because mm. i can't do that um oh hi emma miss you too um <clears throat> well hey hello baby hey, not mama. you your baby um <laughs> that would be weird uh we wouldn't want to do weird <laughs> most people believe that jesus the man existed yeah. as, as a historical uh, Suzanne was just kind of going off on this yeah. recently that, you know, how, how do we, there are a lot of things that we can question, right? but you can, you can your conclusions and stuff, right. but, but you're talking about strong historical evidence that right. you can't really get away from. Right. So I think even a lot of people that don't believe in the gospel believe that Jesus was a real person who existed right. historically. And if not, they're just not trying. Correct. They're not thinking. So I don't understand how you can just like halfway believe something. <laughs> And, yeah. and as you talked about, it's probably in here somewhere, you know, the Christian faith isn't just one where you say, yeah, I believe everything and never question anything. And right. Da, 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 it's da, a da, 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 da. right. Yeah. yeah. That is in there. Uh, so it's not like, and maybe because there are some in every bunch, maybe there are believers who just blindly believe mm -hmm. because it's what they were brought up with or what they were told or whatever, but that's not necessarily what we're supposed to be doing here. No, I do tend to think at least in the contemporary American church. I can't speak beyond that. I think that I would, I don't think I would be remiss in saying, I think it's the majority. Mm. I think the majority of people in our society choose not to wrestle with things that are well, Don't you think that's what creates so many issues? 100%. <laughs> like with the church? I, I, I mean? think that's the problem with our discipleship. Is, yeah. and, and it's, I think it's part of the problem with, Modern evangelicalism in general is, um, and, and not to take everything back to the Reformation. See, this is when, when men don't always think of the Roman, Roman Empire, Empire, you think of the Some of us always think of the, the 16th century <laughs> oh, Reformation. <gosh>. But <clears throat> anyway, as you know, when, when the Protestant Reformation took place, one of the things that Pope Leo, by, by, pretty much all accounts, even among Catholics, seen as a, a corrupt and, and rather vile individual. One of the things that he said was, this is going to create all kinds of schism. You're going to have all sorts of, of error and 
private interpretation and, and so on and so forth. And it wasn't entirely wrong with that. And we've seen how many church splits over denominations and so on. But what we ended up with in, in many ways today <clears throat> in in what we call modern evangelicalism, which I would contend is is probably a lot more modern than it is evangelical. Um, the, the, the core meaning of evangelical is lost in our day. Mm -hmm. You know, what evangelical is gospel centered. This, we believe in the gospel and spreading the gospel and the, uh, the authoritative word of God. And that's not what we're seeing in a lot of evangelical world. <clears throat> we're seeing a lot of the, uh, the light fluffy, you know, because people will understand what I'm saying, I'll, I'll use the term mega church, uh, even though I, I don't think that's really the best, uh, you know, way of looking at it. But, but when we see these, you know, what's the picture we have in our, in our minds, the elevation church, the, you know, the uh, Lakewood and, and these massive churches right. that are, there's a lot of entertainment and all that kind of stuff. And they're super cool. Pyrotechnics and, and well, light that, shows. Right. right. You're literally having that kind of stuff like on, a concert, on Sunday mornings. Yeah. And, you know, there, we have people listening right now who are thinking, well, what's wrong with that? You know, give the people what they want kind of stuff. And, you know, <laughs> we've said so many times here and elsewhere, um, when you sow to the flesh, you reap from the flesh, you know, and, and, and the way you win someone is the way you must maintain that, right? So if we bring somebody in with entertainment and consumerism and, you know, come and get from the church right. rather than them kind of getting into the, the next series here, then then we have to keep on doing it. We have to keep on entertaining. We right. have to keep on giving, you know, hey, come to church and we'll give you a free, you know, right. a free cruise. Well, now you got to keep giving out free cruises <clears throat> to keep people coming. Are there angels? Charles Supersauce? Entertainment Cheese. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is very much this idea, this, this Chuck E. Cheese mentality of, right. of church that is not what the gospel is about. It's not what evangelicalism is about. Hey, Jeremy. <clears throat> and, and when we see, say evangelicalism, again, we're not talking about some weird branch of Christianity. That's right. a Reformation term that, that you know Luther and the other reformers used. In fact, that was when it really first uh, came up as a term, was pointing out the difference between just doing church as this is what we do, we're baptized as, as children, we're, and, and most of the reformers, the majority of the magisterial reformers still did paedo baptism and in, infant baptism wrongly but but that's what they did <clears throat> and a, a whole bunch of our pedo baptist friends are going to be uh, very upset with me for Clutching saying that their pearls. but if you didn't know that you probably haven't been paying attention to where we are uh, we believe in in uh, believers baptism credo baptism anyhow uh <clears throat> as as they made that transition to say look we can't just be here as nominal christians going mm. through the motions this is either the truth of god's word given by god himself in which case it is everything or this whole thing is a sham right right and, and that was what they were experiencing at the time the the interrelation of, of the of the church and the state we think of that as you know just intrinsically bad right that wasn't how they thought of things then but the but the nature of what happened from that created this cultural Christianity, which we have today in different different ways. Now we're what they call the post-Christian society. So that um, you know, when you think of like you know the old uh, sitcoms of you know Andy Griffith and so on and so forth. That, you know, all of these types Little of House things, the Little House on the Prairie, you're going to see Judeo-Christian values woven all through those things, even in unbelieving settings, because that's the foundation of Western civilization. Right. And now we're moving away from a lot of those shared values. And so we don't have the same cultural Christianity that we used to have. There's still vestiges of that, but it's not what it used to be. And, and so, you know, even on Sunday, talking about uh, Rick, Richard Dawkins coming out, talk, calling himself a cultural Christian and so on. As, a, as an angry, uh, what, what you might say, an evangelistic or evangelical atheist is somebody who, who is recruiting people away from belief in God. But he likes Christmas music. But he likes Christmas music. He likes cathedrals. He likes the, you know, the Christianity is better for society than Islam is, is his take on it. And he's not wrong. Uh, but wow. You know, yeah. that, that's, you know, 
I, I consider myself a Bears fan, but I don't actually like the Bears. You know, it's, it's, I hate music, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a music teacher or, or whatever. Uh, there's just so many ways that this just doesn't fit. Does it, the well, logic it, it, doesn't work. It turns Christianity. Smart dude, but turns, obviously not smart enough. It turns Christianity into kind of like an attraction. Like, right. you know, something to... Right. I don't know how to. Well, and you and I've talked about this before. You know, um, I don't know if it's on the podcast or in person, but I, I'm, I have an aversion to even using the term Christianity because right. because it, it it puts us in the same boat as world religions, as if Christianity is a religion, a man made way of getting to God. And if you you know if you're part of this tribe or this group, then you know Christianity is for you. If you're part of this group, then Islam is for you, right. or, or Judaism, or Baha'i faith, or whatever. Uh, and that's just not what we're talking about. We're talking about claims that the Bible claims to be the only truth. Jesus claimed to be the only way, truth, and life, and there is no other option. Which is why Paul can say, as he says in in First Corinthians 15. If it ain't this, it ain't nothing. You're either all in with Jesus or you have no hope to hold on to. The rest is meaningless. So I have a question that's slightly off topic, okay. but sort of not. Well, that would be closer than we usually yeah. are. So. Uh, so what about people who, <clears throat> I don't know, they grow up in, what do they, I don't know what they practice in India, Buddhism, Buddhism. What if about what about somebody who Hindi Hindi whatever yeah. they someone born in India they practice Hinduism Hinduism, Hinduism. Hindi is the language so, they yeah. practice Hin, they they're born into a, a Hindu family they practice Hinduism their entire life they never hear the gospel what uh, what 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 because <laughs> there's a lot of people I feel like that who are maybe just born into a situation yeah. where this is the religion right. this is what you're going to practice this is all you're going to be immersed with your entire life. Period. Yeah. So is there just no hope for those people from birth? We we missed the opportunity for this podcast in, in recent conversations with the youth group and also in the in the Desiring God studies, because we were we we're really looking at at this. Are are all people saved because of Jesus? Right. So and I we only have a few minutes, so it's so probably a loaded question the, to ask. The, it is great timing. <laughs> uh, which we could continue it after yeah. we get done with the audio version, but uh it's that that paywall content right. if we had a paywall. Um, but as we're um, looking at the Romans one and two really kind of lays it out, especially uh, Romans one gives us the scenario for it. We all have enough sense. Uh, Ali Beth, Mc, uh, McStucky, Ali Beth Stucky was talking about this. McDonald's uh, noon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> get a, get the a value meal. Um, that awful. Was talking about this after the, 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 Clips. She didn't care that much about it. And then she watched it and was like, wow, how awesome is God? You know, and bottom line is, how can you see all these things around? Or what were we talking about just before? The, Ew, the fig, fig wasps. The fig <laughs> wasps. You know, how can you see this and think, oh yeah, this just all randomly happened? Yeah. So we know that there's a God, right? right? And we and we know some things about God from creation. And we have to talk ourselves out of right. uh, out of God. So we know enough from nature, general revelation, from human conscience to to be accountable for our sinfulness. And yet we are all sinful mm -hmm. and therefore we are all judged. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, John 3, 16, 17, 18, you know, we know, we all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, uh, the son didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world, right? That the world might be saved through him. 18 points out what that, 17 is talking about, which is explaining 16, which is going back to the, the previous stuff. Um, and 18 says that if you believe in the son, then you're not condemned. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in the son, you're already condemned. He didn't have to come to condemn the world because you're already condemned. That's the natural state of all of us. Sure. Everyone, everywhere, all the time, period. Right. All safe, uh, all, all condemned. Some then are rescued by him. And so those who believe in him uh, receive this mercy from God that that takes us out of that. So those who don't have Christ don't have hope. That's right. the struggle. So that's why 
what uh, Piper calls frontier missions, going to those places where people don't have the gospel. It's so important. This is why Christians give up their lives so that others can know the truth of the gospel. And, and not that you're going to go and build some empire or network or, or colonizing situation, because throughout the history of the church, most missionaries actually do sacrifice the things of this life. They don't you know, become famous. They mm -hmm. don't become wealthy. Instead, you're giving up the pleasures of this world because you know that the reality of life with Christ is greater. It's bigger. You know that this person, this 10-year-old child in Bangladesh who has never heard of Jesus is going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And you can't abide that. And my friends and my neighbors are going to go to hell and I can't abide that. And so I want to do everything I can. I can't make choices for people. I want to do everything that I can to make sure that they know God has offered you a rescue. You are condemned, literally damned. And that's your natural state because we are sinners and our sinful state is hostile to God. We don't submit to God naturally. And all of these other man-made religions are that you're feeding starving children with poison food that that's not going to help. And so, and that's the same thing that happens when we tell people, you know, God loves you just the way you are. Actually he does. But as my mom always told me, he lo also loves you far too much to let you stay that way. Mm. So God, <clears throat> God is angry with the sinner every day with the wicked every day. His wrath burns against sin. All that falls short of his standard, all that falls short of his glory must be destroyed and will be. Well, Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and fall short of his glory. So that's all of us. And the only way out of that is to cling to Jesus Christ, which is why all of the, the cultural Christianity idea, we go to church because you know we, we need a place to, to feel like we fit in and it becomes another social club or whatever else. All of that kind of stuff is an utter waste of time. The, the truth of the whole matter is that Christianity is an absolute waste of time unless it's absolutely true. And if it is true, then like, I really wanted to spend some time talking about your song because it was kind of just Darn, a, we're out of astonishing time. how God brought this together. He's either everything or he's nothing. There, there, there is, if it's not true, then stop. Just, you know, eat, drink and be, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. You know, but that's that's not it okay. because he is raised. And that's what Paul's conclusion here in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 is. But the good news is Jesus did rise from the grave. He is alive. And therefore, when you place your hope in him, when you grasp him and you hold fast and cling to this truth, then you have eternal life with him. And it's not a waste of time. Okay, we will stop there. Thank you for answering my question. Uh, we'll stop there, and we are starting a new series this week, this coming week. We are, See? yes. Yep. All right, so join us for that, either in person if you're here in Southwest Lower Michigan, or you can check out our live stream on Sunday mornings or the podcast version afterward, and we will catch you next week. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, YouTube. Oh.